Hello and welcome to another National Insect Week podcast for 2016. I'm joined today by Jess French, who is known on CBeebies for her series Mini Beast Adventures with Jess. So thank you for joining us today. Very nice to be here. So first of all, could you tell us a little bit about your work that you're doing with insects? Um, Basically, I just want kids to be excited about them. So anything that's related to that, be it taking insects to meet them or taking kids out on bug hunts or talking about insects or even anything to do with the outside world, just getting kids outside and interested. Well, this is what we're doing today. So we're here at London Zoo, actually. Uh, We've just had the launch event. And what were you doing with this? It's looked quite busy manic work. Yeah, I had an amazing bumblebee nest that groups of kids were coming to look at and we were pretending to be bees and we were talking about pollination and why bees are so important and just looking at the amazing construction of the bumblebee nest. I'd never actually seen one before, so that was amazing for me too. I think I was just as excited as the kids. So your work, Mini Beast Adventures with Jess on Sea of Beebees, yeah. this is the same kind of thing, it's exposing uh, children to the insect world. Yes, um, exactly. Could you tell us a little bit about um, what you do on these episodes? Um, so I start in a tree house and I talk a little bit about whichever species we're going to be meeting that day and we talk a bit about the biology and where we could find them and then I go out on a hunt with some kids and we find the insects or the, the mini beasts, whatever they are and we talk a bit about them and there's a little bit of an animation and then we talk about how they can help them so um, if it's something like a bee, maybe planting a bee garden or you know, helping in any way that we can and just getting as interactive as possible with bugs. It's essential then that you really do have the knowledge about the mini beasts that you're finding. Yeah. And so this is where it comes in beneficial. You, you've, uh, you've been a biologist, that's your, your education. Isn't yes, it? yeah. Yeah, I'm a zoologist. I have a degree in zoology from UCL. Uh, but I also grew up with bugs. Um, my dad breeds exotic invertebrates and he used to take me bug hunting all the time. So I think I definitely had, even as a small child, above average knowledge about these creatures and definitely for a girl and I think that was really important when they were casting the presenter for the series as well was to get a girl because I think it can classically be thought of as a boy thing and actually I have I think I probably have more fans that are girls probably because I'm a girl and they're absolutely obsessed with mini beasts and they come and they have their little backpacks and they have magnifying glasses and they're so knowledgeable I just can't believe the stuff these four and five year olds come out with. You have a series of books as well mini beast adventures with Jess the series are you really help her hoping to to help inform and educate these children as well? Yes definitely that's the that's definitely the point of the books um they're very educational we've gone to great lengths to make sure that all of the pictures are anatomically correct. Um, it's very important that when we're infusing kids about insects and mini beasts in general, that we're accurate as well because I want them to know what they're talking about. And I, I think the more you know about the science, the more interesting they become. And there's loads of brightly coloured pictures as well. So I think, I hope they're quite accessible and a good way for kids to start learning and it tells them how to go out and look for the certain types of mini beasts as well so where do the ideas come from um, the books that you're writing because you you are an author for for wider uh, zoology as well so are these uh, subjects that are particularly close to your your heart that you, you focus on anything in the natural world I think that inspires kids to do something to help their planet is something close to my heart. I'm so worried about the future of the planet and I know that the only way we can get kids to save it is by getting them to love it. You can't want to save something if you first of all don't know about it and second of all don't care about it. So behind everything that I do I think that's the driving force and obviously I mean we're all individuals so there are going to be kids that are interested in mini beasts and some that aren't and that's okay and they might be interested in something else so I've also recently written a book about a chimpanzee and you know maybe someone's going to read her story and be inspired in a different way just as long as I'm getting kids to care about the world and make a difference which actually these kids that I talk to all the time they are amazing and they do care and as soon as they know about it you don't need to tell them much before they start saying well what can I do they're just they're amazing and as long as I can tell them what's out there I think they'll just do the rest themselves. 
So you work mainly with uh, very young uh, primary school children. Yeah. Um, do you have interactions with uh, secondary school children? Do you notice a different, uh, a different set at all in the attitudes between these age groups? Oh yeah, absolutely. When when they're primary school kids, they they just go with they don't really think about what they're saying and they re react very instinctively to what you're saying and they're not they don't really have that embarrassment that the older kids have. So you know, you'll tell them something cool about the the world and they'll say, yes, I want to go and I want to go and save that animal. I want I love this creature. I love slugs. I love snails. But when they get a bit older, obviously they're looking at their friends and they're like, well. I'm not going to be very cool if I say, so I'm, no, I'm not going to say I like slugs. But then when a few of them start saying it, obviously there's, there's a lot more of that caring about peers and sort of group mentality. And so yeah, it's definitely harder with older kids, but also the, the flip side of that is that you can be much more scientific and tell them a lot more information than you could tell a smaller child because they just wouldn't be able to process that. Although actually, I think they understand a lot more than we give them credit for. And when I was writing my books, that's one of the conversations I had with the publishers. I was constantly wanting to put more information in because I've seen how much information these young children can take in. What would you suggest is the, uh, the role that parents can have in encouraging their children to be interested in insects and other mini beasts? Do you know, I don't think parents need to do much to encourage. I think they just need to stop discouraging. So we have kids who have... Uh, young kids, you'll show them something and they often won't be fearful until their parent comes over and says, don't touch that, that's dirty, or oh, don't touch that, it could hurt you, even when it couldn't. And a lot of the time it's the parents' fears that obviously they've learned growing up that rub off on the children. And actually the natural way for children to be is to be inquisitive and questioning about the world. And if we just give them the right answers and we don't tell them, we don't teach them to be fearful, then even if we don't encourage them, just stop discouraging them. That's the main thing, I think. When you're doing events, uh, the children that you're working with will often be accompanied by their parents yes. and teachers. Do you notice a change in attitudes um, of the children and the parents during an event? Do they come with a, ooh, ooh, that's disgusting, and then change by the end? Oh, absolutely, yes. And definitely in the show we saw that as well. So in the beginning, kids would, you'd show them something and their immediate response, I mean, not all of them, but the ones who've learnt from their parents or learnt from their friends that these things are dirty and scary, would grimace and pull away. And then inevitably, by the end of talking about it and seeing other kids holding them and seeing me holding them and talking about them, giving them names, by giving creatures names, that makes kids so much more interested in interacting with them. And by the end, inevitably they're saying, can I touch it? Can I stroke it? Can I hold it? And yeah, it's amazing. It doesn't take long. A few minutes can be enough to completely change their mindsets. It sounds like these interactive events are intrinsically rewarding for you. you oh yeah, yeah, I love it. I, I love kids and I love interacting with them and showing them these things that they might not otherwise ever have a chance to see. So, You're really, as you say, um, conscious about the state and the future of our planet and conservation in particular. Yeah. What role do you think educating people um, to appreciate insects and invertebrates has? Oh, it's absolutely crucial. If people, like I said before, if, if people don't know about things, how can you possibly expect them to change them? And if we constantly sweep under the carpet the problems we're creating in the world, the bad things that humans are doing because it's not a nice thing to think about, then how are we ever going to change it? And if we don't tell, if we don't admit the mistakes that we've made to the children of the next generation, then how can we expect them to A, not make those same mistakes again, and B, do something to make a change and try to fix the things that we've done wrong? If we keep telling kids that, nature is dirty and scary and frightening, then how can we possibly expect them to go out there with an open mind and see how amazing it is and then want to protect it? I mean, the first step is definitely getting out there. The second step is loving it. And if you love it, you're just going to want to protect it. And if you get out there, you are going to love it because it's amazing. So with that kind of passion, a fantastic note to end on. So Jess, thank you so much for talking to us today. Thank you.